hello everyone. Um, so I'm here as the proxy for Yuval Yitkin. How many of you know, know Yuval? No. Okay. Uh, so this this uh, this was a talk by uh, prepared by Yuval Yitkin. Uh, it's not something is not good here. Let's try to go through the adapter instead. No? Should I try to lower resolution? Yeah. It worked in the previous uh, room. Now it's fine. not working for you? Something here, I tried this uh, with and without the dongle. Okay, so it, I tried directly and it, it has the same problem. And I just presented in a different room and everything was working fine. Looks like it's okay now. So, don't touch anything. Okay. Let's see. Yep. Sometimes it happens. Technical. Do. <laughs> Good. We can start. Thank you. Okay. So again, so I'm Igor Edry uh, from Nvidia. I, I'm actually delivering this talk on behalf of uh, uh, Yuval Itkin, uh, who is our uh, distinguished architect. Uh, there is a good, uh, an upside and a downside to that. Uh, the, the downside is that, actually, the upside is that uh, instead of watching a video, you get to watch a live person on stage and we can have a discussion. The downside is that I'm a PM, he's an architect. I'm guessing the level may be a little bit different, uh, but uh, we'll see, okay? Um, so uh, what I wanted to talk to you about today is about a DPU management. and. How many of you are familiar with the class of devices called DPU, Data Processing Unit? Raise your hands. Okay, great. So uh, at NVIDIA, we are, de we are developing a DPU, uh, a Bluefield product. And the DPU is really, for those of you who are not familiar with it, is uh, basically a, a smart NIC with a whole a, a array of ARM servers on it, technically, that enables a, a whole new um, range of, of uh, use cases. So you can, uh, we think of it as, uh, as the device that helps you offload, accelerate, and isolate a lot of the host functions and make them run on the DPU. Uh, things that you can do, for example, are you can offload the entire virtual machine management to the, to the DPU. Uh, you can start uh, offloading uh, high-level functions like even running, uh, let's say, web server or storage emulation a lot of uh, sophisticated use case that with a regular NIC are hard to achieve. Uh, once you have this DPU class of devices, you have uh, the ability to offload a lot more than from the main CPU, uh, main, the main uh, processor of the system. Uh, you get to free the, the main processor to actually do the thing that it's uh, good at, which is to running customer workloads. Uh, but now you end up having kind of another server inside your server. That's really uh, the, the implication of, of having this class of devices. So it's not a, 
uh, it's not a dumb device. It's actually a full-blown operating system and, a, and an array of, of ARM processor uh, running inside the DPU as a card inside your platform. Uh, and that poses um, a, a, an interesting set of challenges that I wanted to use this session to share with you uh, and solicit uh, uh, an idea on, on what we think uh, can be done to help us manage DPUs in a, in a standard way. That's, that's the, the, the goal of this talk. So uh, the implication, I'll, I'll walk you through the implications of having a DPU inside the system, what needs to be managed, and what, where, where is the challenge right now uh, in, in doing that. I will say that the DPU for us, uh, um, so in NVIDIA, I acquired Mellanox, and, I, and I, I'm sure you know that there are many uh, NIC3 cards by Mellanox in the ecosystem. The DPU is basically a new a NIC 3.0 form factor card that instead of running just Connectix, which is the NIC, it actually has Bluefield on it and therefore a, a much richer set of functionality. So um, how do you manage the referrals inside the server? So there are a lot of uh, uh, standards that have evolved over the, over the years on how to manage NICs, right? We have uh, the, the sideband ma uh, interface management for uh, like for RDP, you can do MCTP over SMBus, you can do MCTP over PCIe. Um, that, that problem is basically solved because it's been around for many years and, and we know how to manage NICs, right? Um, however, now we have another uh, set of ARM cones on, on the same card, and those ARM cones also need to be managed. Uh, and um, we have, uh, when you have that, you, you can manage them through a USB or you can manage them through a UART. Uh, and the interfaces physically exist. If you look at the OCP NIC uh, 3.0 uh, form factor and you look at the physical connections that you need in order to manage, those interfaces exist on the card. Uh, what's missing is the protocols around them and how to actually achieve the end-to-end -end management scenario. So, um, how do you manage NIC, right? You manage, you manage a, a, a uh, the NIC through the sideband, through the CSCI. You can manage uh, with PLDM uh, management of uh, firmware updates. You can monitor the NIC. Uh, you can do uh, Redfish management. All of this exists, again, at the protocol level. Uh, for the ARM, even though the physical interfaces exist, the, the logical or the, the management protocol level that exists is basically Redfish. Um, and, you also, and we also have the ability to do um, SPDM for, for managing the security aspect of the SOC. By the way, I've been very active in the OCP security group, less so in the server group. Um, so uh, uh, some of the things we're talking about here, uh, when we look at them from the security perspective, we kind of uh, see some angle, but, but here it's really more about end-to-end -end management, and for that end-to-end -end management, uh, we, are, we are seeing some, some challenges. So um, this is really just to show that uh, this is a, a picture from the OCP NIC 3.0 spec, right? And there is a pinout. If you look at the, the OCP 3 NIC, uh, the baseboard, there, is, there, is, there are pins in the connector for connecting the BMC, the baseboard management controller, on the platform to the uh, NIC with a USB. Those exist, uh, which means you can actually have a USB connection if, or USB established a channel from the BMC to the NIC uh, and do stuff with it, but there is no standard way defined on how exactly you can use this, this uh, physical interface to run logical management protocols on top of that. And if I had to summarize this talk in one word, we need MCTP over USB <laughs> and then we can walk through the rest, but that currently is not standardized. So what we are uh, trying to, f to uh, figure out is if there is interest in the community to work with us and try to get that standardized and, and have uh, the logical interface defined. But, but for that, let's understand why it's important. So as I said, the, the DPU is really a server within a server, right? We have ARM calls, they're running some form, some, some form of Linux, um, running on the DPU card. Uh, there is a BMC on the motherboard. There is an x86 that's running customer workloads. What we are trying to, to, uh, to do is manage this DPU card. Uh, and when you try to manage the DPU card, you end up with interesting set of challenges. From a platform level, if you, if you think about what's happening now is that you have another OS putting 
inside the NIC, and booting a whole OS inside the, the, the NIC or the DPU is always going to be slower than booting a, a, a classic NIC. So now it takes time for the DPU to actually be ready until um, the, the, the system is, is, is fully booted, right? You have, you're booting the x86 with the full OS, you're booting the NIC, the, the network aspect of it, but the book, booting the OS of the DPU takes time. Um, there is also one of the key scenarios for um, um, DPUs is to, is to enable a scenario of uh, bare metal uh, services. So you want to have the DPU be, uh, basically um, managing bare metal services where the DPU is the host that the operator controls or the, the server that the operator controls and the x86 is the thing that is offered as bare metal. Uh, and still you need to, be, to have the ability to configure the DPU OS with the right security properties before the tenant starts using the OS. That gives you an interesting use case where um, there are two OSs running, run, and, and, and the BMC, which is on the motherboard, needs to manage the OS that ends up belonging to the, to the, to the uh, operator, to the host. Um, recovering the, B, the, the DPU in those bare metal services uh, cannot be uh, done by the tenant, right? Because the tenant is supposed to get bare metal but not uh, break the isolation for the, for the, for the uh, cloud providers. So you can't have a, a recovery of a DPU um, happening by the external host. Oop. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, what we really are looking for at, at that from a platform level is that the, um, the, the PMC is trusted for DPU management, um, but it still needs to be isolated from the host. So that's really an interesting platform level challenge. Um, and while the BMC is uh, not really trusted by the, the, the provider because it, it's managing the things from the DPU, the BMC is still the owner of all of the thermal management of the platform, and, the, and these things do need to be managed by the, by the operator. So at the high level or at the platform level, you end up with this case where there are two hosts. One of them belongs to the uh, operator or the cloud provider. One of them belongs to tenants. Uh, the BMC is on the, is on the platform and it needs to manage the, the DPU OS and the DPU uh, array of, of ARM processors, but that has to be uh, done without breaking the isolation guarantees uh, that, that you need. What does it mean to manage those ARM processors? So it is a full-blown OS. So you need to manage the provisioning of the operating system. You need to be able to recover the OS. You need to be able to, to provision the operating system parameters, the boot time, a lot of security configuration that needs to happen. You need to be able to trust the, the security of the, of the DPU, um, monitor state, and you need to do that through various interfaces. Um, and those are all management functions that are very hard to achieve from the current interfaces that were meant to manage NICs. There is a big difference between managing a NIC and managing a full-blown OS that may even run custom applications on, on, the, on the DPU, right? So there is a, 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 a whole need for managing those uh, ARM cores inside the DPU. Uh, just so this is clear, this is a real product, right? So the, that's a picture of the NVIDIA uh, Bluefield. And as you can see, it's a NIC 3.0 form factor. And you can imagine that we've found ways to do the management because it exists, but it is uh, what we really would love to see is a standardized way to manage this class of devices. Right. So what, what we really need here is that while the hardware interfaces exist, the protocols, the binding of the protocols over that are things that today are pretty open for interpretation. Um, uh, what we believe is the right way to do that is if we achieve if we define a, a good binding of MCTP over USB and the USB physical interface already exists, then from there on you can use the full uh, server management stack to also manage the server on the DPU. Uh, and that would give us a, a, a good standard way to manage uh, DPUs, in, including the complexity of having a full blown uh, server in there. Um, and we're looking for, uh, you know, engagement to get together and get that uh, driven uh, through the community um, and uh, you know, help define that 
a, as, a, as a standard binding uh, within the MTF. So if anyone here is interesting, interested in this uh, domain, problem domain, reach out to me, reach out to Yuval, uh, and we will be happy to engage together and get that uh, done. That's all I had. Thank you. Thank you, Yigal.